November 27th, 2018, Finance Committee meeting. Committee members present, myself, Councilor Dinatelli, Councilor Zarella, Walsh, Boschman, and also present, Councilor Squalia. We will start with 290 18, in order that the City of Fitchburg hereby approves the expenditure of funds from the MEMA Emergency Management Performance Grant in the approximate amount of $13,760. For the purpose of said grant, which is to purchase an SCBA fit tester and specialized ballistics protection equipment for an active shooter or hostile environment event. And I have a letter here from Chief Roy to the Mayor dated October 31st, 2018. Dear Mayor Di Natale, I am requesting the city accept a grant from Mass Massachusetts Emergency Management in the amount of $13,760. This grant will allow us to purchase an SCBA fit tester and specialized ballistics protection equipment for an active shooter and or hostile environment in event. This equipment will increase our ability to provide these services to Fitchburg and surrounding communities. This will allow us to integrate our rescue response with law enforcement authorities. The respirator fit tester is used to properly fit a firefighter's SB, SCBA mask to the individual's face. If you have any questions regarding this grant, please contact me. Chief, was there anything like you that? Like you, thank you. The, is there anything you'd like to add? <laughs> this is your view today. Yeah. Nick, um, just a um, couple of things on this. Um, this is one of the... the um, um, MEMA grants that we apply for each year and, and pretty much get. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a good grant for us because we don't get a whole lot of these small grants to keep up some of our equipment that really nece uh, necessitates um, things that we do every day. Um, the fit tester, we had a fit tester that's about 15 years old now. We used to fit test each firefighter when he came on the job before he went to the fire academy. Uh, as of, some of you may know, as of February of 2019, Massachusetts is going to become an OSHA state and we have to comply with all OSHA regulations, which means we have to fit test all our people every year and new people and each of our face pieces for each mask, which is about 53 of them. So the, uh, the old uh, fit test that we couldn't get parts for, it, it basically wasn't operating anymore. So this will update our equipment and enable us starting in February. We'll have to test every, all of our firefighters every year, fit test for their masks to make sure that they fit right and then keep all the uh, products of combustion out. Um, the sec most of that is going, I think $8,000, $8,500 is for that unit. And the remind remainder is going to our ballistic helmets and vests, which we started purchasing last year with this grant um, as you know in conjunction with the Fitchburg Police Department we've been training together working for active shooter situations uh, and certainly um, we've found over the years now as the police have changed their techniques in these these situations as have changed where we realize EMS people have to get in to the scene once police stabilize and treat victims and save lives. So this will ensure that our people, uh, this will bring us up to 20 vests and 20 helmets. So all our on-duty shifts, uh, on-duty shift would be able to respond with the proper protective gear to that type of incident. And I'll take any questions. Council Boschman. One quick question. You just talked about being an ocean state, OSHA state, yes. and uh, fitting a mask. So that means that your employees cannot have a beard or anything like that. Am I really yeah, wrong? We've never allowed our employees to have anything in the seal area of the mask. Okay. So beards, long sideburns, those are not allowed. Some guys have goatees, but no hair underneath the chin. Anywhere with a mask seals right. to your face, we've never allowed that in Fitchburg. All right, because I know that's what happened to GE. We couldn't have one either. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, it's, that's yeah. all I want to make a motion we accept. Second. Motion made and seconded to accept 2918. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you, Council. <coughs> Thank you. 291.18, in order that the City of Fitchburg hereby approves the expenditure of funds from the Massachusetts Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, State 911 Department Training Grant in the approximate amount of $23,840.52 for the purpose of said grant, which is to train both fire and police department dispatchers in medical and 911 emergency procedures. And I have a letter here from Chief Martineau to the Mayor on November 7th. Dear Mayor Di Natale, the Fitchburg Police Department has received an allocation of funds totaling $23,840.52 from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts State 911 Department through their training grant program. These awarded funds are to be used to train fire department dispatchers in emergency medical dispatch procedures and police department dispatchers in 911 emergency procedures. Since the police department is the fiscal agent for this grant, I'm requesting your approval to start spending down <coughs> these funds. This grant expires on June 30th, 2019. Chief Martin, anything you'd like to add? Um, that what you just read pretty much sums up this grant opportunity. Um, you know, we're required <coughs> to do so much 911 training with our emergency dispatches, and through this uh, grant opportunity, we're able to backfill the shifts on overtime 
Um, it's, uh, they do a considerable amount of training each year, and, and without this type of funding, it, it would come out of our general overtime budget. So this one is pretty self-explanatory, but more than happy to take any questions in regards to it. Make a motion we accept 291.18. Motion made and seconded to accept 291.18. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. Uh, we will next move on to 292.18. In order that the City of Fitchburg hereby approves the expenditure of funds from the Department of Justice Office of Community Oriented Policing Services School Violence Prevention Program grant in the approximate amount of $185,692 for the purpose of said grant, which is to improve security at schools and on school grounds. Letter dated October 31st of this year to the mayor from... Chief Martineau, uh, dear Honorable Mayor, the Fitchburg Police Department has received an allocation of funds totaling $185,692 from the Department of Justice Office of Community Oriented Policing Services School Violence Prevention Program. These awarded monies are intended to approve security at schools and on school grounds through evidence-based school safety programs. I request your approval to start spending funds from this award. Uh, we also have this evening um, Acting Superintendent uh, Jokola here as well. Would either of you gentlemen like to add? I would. Uh, thank you, Councilors. This one's a little bit more in depth, so I would like to just give a little exp explanation of where, where we are and how <coughs> we got there. Um, this was a uh, federal grant, <coughs> extremely highly competitive grant, similar to the ones you saw at the last finance meeting. Grant solicitations were only 60 awards nationally, and there were only four cities in the, in the entire Commonwealth that received uh, money under this grant program. Um, this goes in conjunction with the other two grants that we did through the COPS program as we're trying to uh, improve our security at our public schools. Um, this one is, is a lot higher than the other ones, and let me just explain uh, what our thought process on this. The second grant that's already gone through this council uh, was in regards to security assessments, and we're in the process right now uh, looking at, and determining which company we're going to hire to do our security assessments. When we wrote this grant, the specific grant, we came up with a total cost grant amount of $247,589. Under this grant, there was a match under this grant for 25%. Um, at that time, uh, Superintendent Ravenel was um, still with us, and, and I met up with the superintendent, and we went over this grant, and I explained to him, you know, our what we would like to do out of this grant is improve the security at our schools and also improve our communications because communication during an during a, a, a active shooter or any emergency situation is imperative. And with a grant of this size, it would give us the opportunity to do that. Um, at that time, I had full support from Superintendent Ravenel. And during this transition, uh, myself and uh, Acting Superintendent Jokla have been discussing this and, and we're still in agreement that this is the direction we want to move in. Um, so it, it's a 75-25% breakdown. As you said, we're, as I said, we're getting $185,000 for this grant. Initially, we were looking at different options on, on what we could do for our schools. And when we wrote this grant, we were looking at security door locking systems. And th there's a couple of vendors that provide security locks for all interior doors. And uh, we wrote this grant in consideration that we may want to go down the road of putting security locks in. Uh, but we, know, we knew when we were writing this grant that once we had an analysis from the security assessment team, they may push us in another direction and say, you know, security locks are a great idea. However, after our review of the Fitchburg Public Schools, you may want to do this. Um, so that part of this grant we're, we're going to hold off on until we have our security assessment. If the security team says door locks are the way to go, then that's the way that we're going to go and we'll proceed with, with, a, with procurement on, on door locks. If it's not, we simply write a modification. Um, we do that quite frequently on federal grants where we make a modification. As long as the modification is in the same basket of fruits, for lack of better terms, if as long as it's security for security, um, the federal government has no qualms with that type of modification. So we're going to wait and see what happens with the, the assessment, and um, that will dictate which direction we go, whether it's door locks or some other type of security, physical security measure. The second part of this grant is some an area that, that we've been having difficulty with, and it's wood communication. And there's a product out there. It's a bi-directional amplifier system. And for lack of better terms, it's a, it's a product that you put into a school building. It's mandated. If you build a school today, it's mandatory that these go into school buildings today. If you're building a school building tomorrow, um, it will have a bi-directional amplifier system in there. 
Um, and what that does is when you, if you have an active shooter, if you have a, a tragic event at one of your public schools, um, it's no longer just Fitchburg Police Department responding, no longer Fitchburg Fire Department responding. There's people coming from all over. So if I have officers responding from Ashburnham, Lunenburg, even maybe parts of southern New Hampshire, if we have something horrific at one of our schools, those bi-directional amplifiers will pick up on that police officer's radio and allow them to communicate all the way back to where they are. So it's going to expand the capability of all first responders going into that building, um, including with the state police. And we, we've had some instances where we had the state police up at Fitchburg High School because it's so far in the outskirts of the city, their communications are a little choppy. This will eliminate that, these bi-directional bi bi-directional amplifier systems. Um, this past year, we've done tests in all of our schools. Some of our schools are in great shape. Um, this building right here, we, we had no, no issue at all. We, we determined that there's not a need in this school. Um, obviously, Fitchburg High School, um, we have a need for a bi-directional system. We have a need at the Longjoe School at the McKay School and the South, El South Street El Elementary School. All the other schools came in fine with communication needs. Um, this equipment is not cheap. Uh, to put those systems in those schools is going to be $100,000, but this will improve our communication capability tenfold in, in the case of a, of a horrific, horrific, horrific event. In addition to this, um, I may have told this council it's, m it's my intention, once we get to a point where communication is no longer an issue, um, I want to start issuing portable radios to our schools, to our administrators at the schools where if they need law enforcement, if they need fire or EMS for a tragedy or for something that's significant, they're going to have the capability right at their hands. You know, your school principal, vice principal, they can pick up one of the police radios, push a button, and they know they are talking directly to the police. There's no phone calls, no relying on any other form of communication. So um, this is going to greatly improve our communication abilities within the city. Uh, I'm thankful that Mr. Jokla came here this evening. If, if this council have any questions for our acting superintendent, or I would be happy to answer any questions when it comes to this grant. Council Zarella. Um, I'd just like to congratulate the police department, uh, Chief Martineau, and his grant writer, whose name escapes me at the moment. Christy Fisher. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> this is yet another highly competitive grant. Uh, you know, you don't think, unfortunately, a lot of people don't think of Fitchburg being in, you know, the top, whatever it would be, fraction of a percentage of municipalities in the country in terms of getting these things up and running. But thanks to your efforts, that's exactly what we're doing. We're getting out ahead of the curve. Um, 60 municipalities, I don't even know how small a percentage of total cities and towns in the country that is uh but it's very impressive thank you council school <coughs> um so this seems to be a proactive measure um i have a couple questions you're the bi-directional amplifier yes. that is that like a radio box that um allows how does that work what what exactly is that it's an antenna system and and, and i am the furthest from an expert when it comes to radio it's communications. It's like an an That's, antenna uh, amplifier. Yes, it, it actually amplifies when 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 a when a uh, an official is using a portable radio. It sends out a signal from that portable radio. It goes to this amplifier system, which takes that signal and boosts it. Boosts it, puts it on steroids. It just puts it out there. So it's taking it and really pushing it out to to wherever its home base may be. And this already works with the systems that. Um that are in use of in the surrounding towns. It and works cities? all with radio communications. And yes. how far does it go? It's pretty. F it's pretty far from what I've been told. And and it is a requirement. I'm told it is a requirement now. If you're building a new new school facility, that these these amplifiers. That either those are installed or it's tested that it can reach a certain. And, and this all came about because of the tragedies this nation's seen when it comes to school violence. That communication is key when, when you're going through a, a tragic event like that communication because you have so many entities responding it's not just a local city it's 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 being responded by several several different communities so so the total grants 247,000 approximately or the total need and 25% uh, 
of that is matched, so approximately 61,000. Right. So the school department will be kicking in the match on that. The school department's paying for that out of the school budget. <coughs> out of school funds. Yep. Yes. Okay. And um, the, is it four schools that are getting the bi-directional amplifier system? During our initial study, we came up with four. Um, as I stated earlier, I'm really going to rely on the, the security assessment um, to see what, the, what their opinion is on this. Um, I, I'm confident to say Fitchburg High is definitely getting it because that's our further school out. Um, you know, McKay School, that, that may be on the lower end. I, I would definitely sell Street School. <laughs> and then we'll take another look at Long Joe. But it'll depend on the results of the security assessment will. On, on exactly what we spend this entire grant on. Exactly. Is that correct? Exactly. You know, the uh, security assessment team may come back and say that you have a greater need for an uh, enhanced camera system versus the door lock system. And, and if that's the case, that then whatever is left in this 189, I can move this money around through a modification in this grant. Um, they may tell me that your bi-directional system is imperative at Fitchburg High, <coughs> not so much at one of the other schools because it has a more centralized location, yet you have a greater need for an enhanced camera system at your furthest point, which would be the high school. Um, so at that point, that's when we'll really take a look at this. And if we have to shuffle one need for another and do a modification, that's where we'll make that call at that point. But and the security assessment is supposed to, you're supposed to get that uh, I'm being aggressive on that. I would like to see it done uh, before the end of the school year. Um, Captain LeMay has reached out to the procurement department today. Um, we're, we're seeing if, the, if it has to go through the uh, traditional procurement process. Um, so we're, we're ironing out some stuff right now on that. And if you remember, uh, the first part of this uh, school uh, grant was the uh, see, say, see Something, Say Something app, and we're trying to roll that out very soon. And when, is there a deadline for the spending of the... Uh, Two years. Okay. Two years. So I, we do have, time is on our side on this grant. And if we feel like we're running into a, a press for time, once again, there's always a modification opportunity to say we're moving forward. Um, as long as we show progress, um, we'll be okay with this grant. Thank you. Welcome. Council Boschman. This question is to both. With all this grant money that we're getting, is there anything that the school system doing to get the students prepared? Like say if I some nut walked into your building at Pittsburgh High School and had a gun and started shooting up the place. So uh, at all our schools over the last few years, we've been rolling out the ALICE program, <coughs> Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, Evacuate program, and we've been working with the police department uh, as we run our ALICE drills. Um, and I think we have almost completed, we might have one or two schools that still have to perform a drill before the end of the year. Yep. But a majority of our schools have uh, completed their, their drill for this school year. Okay, that's all I have to ask. I just Council have a Walsh. I yep. just have a quick comment. Uh, I just, it's nice to see that the relationship between the, the police department and the school department has continued with the change in leadership. So. And I, I just want to add also just a to piggyback on uh, Councilor Zarella's comments, I happened to be at a conference where there were other districts talking about how they were applying for uh, this grant, this competitive grant, and, uh, and they didn't get it. Um, so I think it's a real uh, testament to Christy Fisher mm -hmm. and, the, and really the entire police department for successfully getting these funds um, to Fitchburg and the school department. I'll make a motion that we accept 292-18. Motion made and seconded to approve 292-18. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Please stand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 293-18. In order, the City of Fitchburg hereby approves the expenditure of funds from the Department of Justice Office of Justice Programs, as provided to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Office of Public Safety and Security Grant, in the approximate amount of eighteen thousand nine hundred eighteen dollars and thirty-eight cents for the purpose of said grant which is to purchase police equipment, including radios, tactical helmets, and shields. Uh, November 14th, 2018, letter from the chief to the mayor. The Fitchburg Police Department has received an allocation of funds totaling $18,918.38 from the Department of Justice, Office of Justice Programs. These awarded monies are intended to provide police equipment that will enhance overall law enforcement officer safety. We intend to purchase police radios along with tactical helmets and shields. I request your approval to start spending funds from this award to benefit <coughs> both the department and the city of Fitchburg. Chief. Thank you. 
this is a grant that we apply for each year. This grant is administered out of the Executive Office of Public Sa Safety. Um, it is a federal grant, but uh, EOPS is the administrator of this grant. This grant is traditionally used for equipment. Um, when we take a look at it, and it's based on, on uh, the size of the city, um, your, your crime rate in the city, uh, there's, there's a few factors that they scale out on actually how much money a, a city will be awarded. Um, the city of our size is, is typically anywhere from eighteen to twenty thousand dollars. So um, this year we, we sat down and we tried to decide what our needs were this year. Um, you've heard me come before this body before. Um, we're continually trying to replace our portable radios to get the, the, the best portable radio that's out there. Um, they're about $3,500 a piece, $3,000 a piece per portable radio. I would need 100 of them. That's $300,000. Um, instead of doing it in the one lump sum and utilizing taxpayer money, we've been breaking it down twice a year, different grant opportunities, buying 10, buying 12, buying six. So within this grant, we're looking to buy six portable radios. Um, that'll get us closer to our goal. I think we're about halfway there. Um, not saying the other half of our radios don't work, uh, but these are the state-of-the-art radios that will allow communication with multi multitude of agencies. The other part of this grant um, is to purchase ballistic shields and ballistic helmets. Um, currently, all of our first responder vehicles, our frontline fleet, all seven cars, um, we treat our cars as rapid response cars. You may have heard that terminology in the past, rapid response, when you're, when you're deploying quickly to an emergency situation, whether it's an active shooter or, or some other horrific event in the city. Um, some cities and towns have app, app, app rapid response units. In our city, we, we deploy a little differently. We want to make sure every one of our vehicles is a rapid response vehicle and it has the proper equipment within it that can respond to any given situation. So under this grant, uh, all of our vehicles currently have ballistic shields. The ballistic shields have, they, there's a shelf life of about five years on those where the ballistic capability starts to decrease. We thought this was a great opportunity this year to replace all of our ballistic shields. Um, in addition, something we've never had in our cars is ballistic helmets. Uh, ballistic helmets are adjustable helmet that, that have ballistic capability just like a vest and just like a shield. So now if your frontline car is responding to an active shooter situation, when they roll up on that scene, they have the equipment, they have the tools to get out, defend themselves, protect whoever they're there to protect, and, and, and survivability goes up significantly. Um, this is some equipment that you know, we, we take advantage of the grants like this instead of hitting our operating budget. Uh, but quite frankly, these are the tools of our trade, and, and we're glad that we have the opportunity to purchase it through a grant. Chief, you said that the radios were $3,000 a piece, give or take? Yes, yes sir. Uh, and you said you were going to get six of them? Yes. That would be the 18000 would it not? We're so taking the rest of out of our equity sharing account. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, and and then the balance will be for the shields and the how many shields and ballistic helmets for all seven of the front seven. line. Seven, we're doing it right across <coughs> the line. And and right now there are no helmets in those. Helmets we've never had in the okay. past. We uh, years ago we had a tactical team in Fitchburg. We had our own uh, rapid response team, um, but we changed our mentality and we wanted rapid response units. So um, the helmets we've never had before, and I think it's going to be a good addition to uh, to to cruises. And and so when I, when a officer pulls up on scene do they have to physically get out and go into like the trunk or go into to pull this equipment out um yes okay uh, the, the back the back end of all of our cruises are equipped with deluxe boxes that house all of the specialized equipment okay um and it's exactly for that purpose so that that the officers can get out of the car quickly deploy whatever equipment they need for any given situation and have all the best tools at, at their hands to uh be productive in their mission so I think I think it's a necessity that they have the helmets. I mean, I didn't know that they didn't have the helmets, so that's good to know that we're adding that extra layer of security for them. Um, so uh, another grant that, to me, is a home run and definitely necessary. I'll make a motion we accept 293-18. Motion made and seconded to approve 293-18. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. And last on the agenda, 294.18, in order that the City of Fitchburg approves the expenditure of funds from the Massachusetts Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, VAWA grant, in the approximate amount of $57,983.31 for the purpose of said grant, which is to support the domestic <laughs> violence advocate position within the police department. Um, Chief Martino. Thank you. Um, this grant, I can't say enough about this grant. Uh, this grant will support the Fitchburg Police Department's full-time domestic violence advocate position. 
Um, and including it in, in not just supporting her salary, this does take care of our fringe benefits and some of our office supplies. Um, Fitchburg Police Department responds to over 300 domestic calls, domestic situations in any given year. And, and to have a full-time advocate on staff to provide those services to victims of domestic violence um, it is leaps above what uh, other municipalities do. Um, some some other, other municipalities rely on advocacy once it gets to the court system. We try to be very proactive when it comes to domestic violence. Each and every day when a domestic happens, that next day our advocate is, is going through every domestic report and that advocate is reaching out personally to each person that has been a victim of domestic violence. And at that time, our advocate will walk them <coughs> through the system and be that guidance through sometimes a very tangible system when it goes over the court. Um, very proud of the domestic program we have in the police department. We, we've been very lucky, very successful for the last seven or eight years. Um, getting this VAWA grant year after year. Um, you know, we're very fortunate to, to have, like I said, a full-time advocate on staff. And, um, you know, this is just an opportunity where we can keep this, um, this program afloat and going. So is this position, are they like a caseworker? Or, or are they more similar to that? Okay. Um, you know, it, advocacy is, is, is just having someone that understands the system and, and being someone that you can rely on when you're, when you're going through a terrific, uh, horrific situation. And, um, you know, it's just, it just it speaks volumes when, when, when she has the opportunity to reach out to a victim. And not, not just the day after. Um, something we do that's very unique in, in, in our city is we do outreach one week, two week, a month afterwards. Uh, because someone's a victim of domestic violence today doesn't mean we're going to forget about them tomorrow. Our advocate is reaching out a month from now, and we're actually going out. We do home visits. Our advocate will go out once or twice a month w with, a, with a police officer, and we do unannounced visits at victims' homes to say, we haven't forgotten about you. Is there anything else we can do for you? And, and we follow you know, uh, our victims for, for quite a while and uh, do whatever we can for them. This is something a police officer could never do. We, uh, her skill set is much different than what a police officer would bring to the table. And uh, we, we just give a, a, a higher level of attention to domestic violence here in the city and we're able to do it through this VAWA grant. And you said that we're not, a lot of communities don't have this kind of a position? No, very few. Okay. Um, I would say out of the 364 cities and towns in Mass, um, I, I think a good estimated number is maybe 100 communities. I, I mean, I'd hate to be quoted on that, on, on distinct numbers, but... Um, Certainly less than half. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, you know, communities that may have a harder time funding this position, it, it, they feel that funding a police officer is a, a greater bang for their buck. Um, I've been very fortunate. I, I've worked with our advocate, not just as the chief of police, but when I was in charge of our criminal investigation division, I worked with our advocate hand in hand. And whether it's a domestic that happens at some random apartment or house in Fitchburg tonight, or we're dealing with a victim of a horrific crime, um, seeing what an advocate can bring to the table is really significant. And you know, th this this money goes a long way. And this is you know. Uh, you hear me giving Christy all the clamors in the world. The, the VAWA grant's very competitive, and uh, we're fortunate. We're getting this every, every year um, because we show that the system works and what we're doing with the money and, and, and our outcomes, are we, we're producing positive outcomes. So from a budgetary standpoint, um, this is the end of November. Uh, I know your operating budget had it at 100% covered by the grant. So how... Didn't you say it was covered 100%? This is covered by, if you, if you, my operating budget had a line item of 25 and change for right. a domestic violence advocate. That's where I was going. It had 25 in there, but this was covering, the, so. Yes. 2,500. 25,000. 25,000. Yes. So the 57 covers the remainder of that salary and then some excess for the supplies that you were talking about. There, there will be, yes. Because okay. when, when we were going through the budget cycle last year, the VAWA operates on a, on a, a federal cycle. Yes. And when we were producing last year's budget, it, it just the importance behind this position and, and speaking with the mayor <coughs> and, and, the, and the council, I wouldn't want to lose this position. So we, we funded it within our operating budget, but we didn't fully fund it, yeah. knowing that there would have been other money within police personal services in case we didn't get this. Yeah. So we basically half funded it, and now that we got full funding on this grant, 
um, that will replace whatever is left in that line item and so when we when we when we look at the operating budget during June time frame when you when you it put in there half half of what the cost would be um, with the intention the, the hope that you're going to get the money down the road from the feds in the event you don't have it you still plan that contingency in your operating budget where if we do not get that money you have the coverage for the remainder of her salary I have there's about eight fail stops within police personal services yep. that that would provide me that protection okay uh, because I have such a fluid personal services account where mm -hmm. personnel come personnel go yep. um, for a whole host of reasons so there's always that fail safe yep. uh, historically and we, you know, as we produced last year's budget, we knew we were there. We knew there would be money in there. We would not go in the black in this, but um, we were confident we're going to get this. And here we are. We got it. So now there's going to be a surplus there. And I have some thoughts just, on that. Just, just so the public knows that we're, you know, we have a fail safe in there in the event that we don't get this grant, because the concern from grant funded positions, as you know, is we get complacent and we get used to that grant and then if the grant goes away we don't have the coverage internally to keep it going in this case we have the coverage planned in there in the event that we do not get it because we recognize the importance of this position so that's good to know we do I mean and you're very much well aware we have uh, line items within personal services that we know are going to go down historically because sure. retirements because of different educational levels through incentives um, so yes, we were extremely confident that, that the money was there with a half-funded budget, but now here we are and we're getting full funding from the and, and the And the feds, when they award this, you have to continuously every year justify the need for the position. So oh. my question is, you, the, the award is not just, sure, we gave it to them the last few years, give it to them again. You have to justify and prove to the feds that this position is actually producing results or else they can give it to anyone else, as you said. That's, That's why we've yeah. been successful. We, we're required to do monthly reporting on mm -hmm. domestic violence. And, and the, the amount of time our advocate puts into monthly reporting, um, her due diligence is part of our success in this program. Um, the timely information that she reports back to the federal government on how successful this program is, how many outreaches we've made, how many success stories we had, it's done on a monthly basis. Okay. Councilor Walsh. Um, I just, I just want to say from my personal experience uh, as a professor of criminal justice, um, we've sent numerous interns to the Fitchburg Police Department and at every opportunity each intern has worked with the domestic violence advocate and it's something that um, we, we don't get at other police departments because they don't have this position and it's a it's a critical part of their training and um, just the fact that that um, I, again uh, you know hats off to to the department and to uh, Christy and to uh, Stephanie Dondero the um, uh, domestic violence advocate um, it's, it's the fact that you've um, it, the total number of grant monies here is about two hundred and ninety thousand dollars, which is not coming out of, of you know, our pockets, but it's you know coming from the federal government is um, just really impressive all around. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yes, thank you, Council Bushman. Chief, you yes. know, on this advocate, she yes, just Fitchburg. She doesn't go to Lunenburg. She doesn't go to Lemonster. Just Fitchburg. Just Fitchburg. Uh, but we, we are the central hub. We, we have a uh, high-risk outreach team that comes into the city on a monthly basis. That's at, that's people from the uh, Worcester Court. Um, <coughs> Mr. does have a part-time advocate. They, they send that part-time advocate over. Members from the Lunenburg Police Department come over. In addition, we have a relationship with Fitchburg State. Stephanie spends one day, away, one day a week providing advocacy support to any university student as Councilor Walsh mentioned, we have a fabulous relationship with, with the university. We, we had an intern two years ago that did a, a two-year follow-up study on past victims of, of domestic violence to see where they were today and just to hear the success because of the work that our advocate did was phenomenal. So we have that relationship with the university, so we're constantly working with them. Um, but to make your question easy, yes, primarily Fitchburg. Okay. Council Squire. Yeah, Chief, that was my only question is, do you, what of these surrounding communities around us, ha, do they have victims advocates and does our vi victims advocate do, sure. you know, work with them? One that was my The city of Lemonster has a, a part-time advocate right now, um, speaking with Chief Goldman. Um, it's a top priority of his. Um, he's in the same mindset about victim advocacy. As a part-time? No, as a full-time, getting his position, his advocate to be a full-time position. Um, 
quite sure Gardner does not. Um, no, I, I'm pretty much positive Gardner does not have a full-time advocate. Um, all the courts do have advocates, so that's why it's not as a great a necessity for your towns to have them, the Westminsters, the Lunenburgs. Um, every court has an advocate within the, in the judicial system. Um, we like having our own advocate because we follow them much longer. You go to the court, it may be just advocacy for that day. What we're providing to a victim of violent crime or a victim of domestic violence is much longer advocacy, uh, someone that they can talk to, someone that they can guide through the way. So that, that's, where, that's where the big distinguish is between having an in-house advocacy program versus a, a courthouse advocate. So Fitchburg, Lemonster. That's, that's about it here. Um, Worcester has three full-time advocates. Um, um, the district attorney office obviously has a whole host of advocates. And uh, you know, like I said, we host monthly meetings for the high-risk team. We, we, we go over all domestic reports in a month's time. We, we evaluate them at what risk level they were, maybe come to a different level. Um, you know, what's happening here in the city is at the cutting edge when it comes to response to domestic violence. Thanks. Council Bushman. Chief, my final question for you. You say we have about 300 cases. Will you say this, a, a city like Fitzroy Lake, Lemons is the same size. Would they have about the same number of calls too? You have any idea? I No, I can't comment on Lemons' statistics, no. This is wondering. All right, I make a motion that we accept 294-18. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve 294-18. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you, Chief. Thank you for your support. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Chief, very much. Thank you. I like the last one.